Hi everyone, and welcome to AutoCAD. My name is Ari, and I'm an AutoCAD professional with Digital Drafting Systems. Today, we're going to learn how to create leaders. There are two different ways that we can create leaders in AutoCAD. One of them is the multi-leader tool, and the other one is the regular lead tool or leader tool. So let's look at the leader tool. It's a bit older, and it does have some benefits. And we can see the text down here is using the lead tool, and we can tell immediately because the leader itself and the text itself are two separate entities. So if we go to our annotation panel under the Home tab, we can see there's a little icon for leaders right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the drop down next to it. And it does say leader here, but this is actually very misleading. If we hold our mouse over this, it then shows us that the command for this is mLeader. Therefore, this is the mLeader tool and not the regular lead tool. To access the regular leader tool, we would then type lead right here. And we can see that we see lead or leader in parentheses and mLeader as separate entities. And the mLeader has the same icon that we saw in our panel. And so that's how we can distinguish between both of them. So let's use lead first, and then we'll use mLeader a little bit later. So lead will now ask us to specify our leader start point, which is essentially what we're going to be pointing to. So I'm just going to point to this line right around here. I'll turn ortho off so that I can make my angle for whatever I'm pointing towards. Then I do want to turn ortho back on so that I can essentially draw a straight line to the right. And this is for our shoulder. And the shoulder happens to be this asset right here and here for both of our leaders. So I'm going to make my shoulder. I'd like to make it about 0.5 units so that it's about a fixed length. And I can continue making more points and drawing this line indefinitely if I wanted to. But for most leaders, we'd be done right here. So I'm just going to press Enter again. Now it's going to ask us to enter the first line of annotation text, and we could do that very quickly just by typing. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to press enter in order to access our options and see the capabilities of this leader tool. So now I pressed enter, and we can see that we have tolerance, copy, block, none, and M text. So we're going to talk about all of these in order. The first one we're going to do is M text, where essentially I can just press enter again because M text is the default selection and the last one that was used. So now I can immediately begin typing some data. So I'm just going to type data. And when I'm done, I'm just going to click somewhere on the screen. Now we're essentially done with this leader. And we can see by mousing over it that we have a separate leader and separate text here. Now we can also click on our leader here and we can look in properties and we can see that we have lots of different kinds of data. Be careful when using your mouse wheel over properties. You don't want to accidentally change any of the criteria here with the mouse wheel because if I mouse over any of this and use the mouse wheel, I can actually change its data. So I'm just going to be very careful. And what really helps us here is we can see that the arrow size is here and we can modify it. So it's at 0.18 by default. So I can change this to 0.25 and now the arrow itself just got a little bit bigger. It's now matching this arrow here, which if I scroll down, uh, actually, sorry, this is the wrong one. It's, I meant to look at this leader arrow right here. And this one is also at 0.25. So we can change its size. We can also change the text size here. So we can see that this is M text, so that is quite useful. And we can scroll down and we can see the text height here and we can change it as well. And so this is the first step to using the regular leader tool. We're going to make it again and look at some of the other options right now. Let's create another leader and let's look at the other options in the list. So we'll type lead and make our leader here. I'll make it right around here this time. Make a nice shoulder at 0.5 units. And then I will press enter again and then enter one more time. So we looked at how we can add text, which is pretty self-explanatory. We have the none option, which you can guess basically means none. You just made a leader by itself now. So there's no need to use that in this instance. We understand how that works. Let's go again and use the lead command. And let's make another one. And then I'll make a nice shoulder. Enter and enter again. So then we have the option for block, which I'm going to show a little bit later. Copy is a very interesting one. You can actually copy any text from another leader that you want. So what we're going to do is we're just going to use copy, and we can see that the text here can be highlighted. So I can just select an object. Let's do the text in a block one and see what we get from this. 
And there it is. It actually picks up on the exact formatting of the text, so it really will copy it uh, with the colors and the font size and everything associated with the text. So that's one way that you can do that. Now let's get rid of this one more time and let's look at block. So I'm just going to type in lead one more time. We'll start right around here and we'll do it just one more time. 0.5, enter, enter, and enter again. So block is very interesting and it does work in a very particular way. It's asking us for the block name. We can also press this question mark and it's asking us to enter the blocks to list. Now, this doesn't really work as intended because if I was to press enter right now, it's going to open up my command line. It's going to show that there are some defined blocks down here. So essentially, if you don't know the name of your block, you basically could use this list here, but it's a bit odd to use. But we can see the defined blocks right here in this area. And we're going to be using the hex head bolt, and it's basically uh, case sensitive. So we need to memorize its exact name, then put a space, dash, space, and imperial. So now it's asking us to enter the block name now that we have this list here. So we can type that in. So we're going to type hex head bolt imperial and let's press enter. And there it is. And so now it's asking us for the insertion point. I just clicked at the top of my screen here in order to get rid of that command line and to be able to move this. So now we can move it very easily. And now it's asking us to place this. So I could place it anywhere I want to. I think I'm going to place it right down here. And so this is how you can associate a block with your leader. Now it's asking us to create the block size. And if we read the text, it does say to enter an X scale factor and specify the opposite corner or, and we can see in our command list, we can use corner or X, Y, Z. Now, what I prefer to do in this instance is to essentially just put our scale factor in. If you want your block to remain the exact same size that it was created as, all you need to do is type in one and then enter. It's now asking for the Y scale factor, which usually is the same as the X scale. There are some niche situations in which your Y scale factor will be a little bit different. But in this case, we're just going to press enter a second time. And now there's one last thing. It's asking us what rotation angle we want. So I could leave it as it is right now and essentially do zero. I can also just click on the screen. So I can just click right here. And this is it. We have now added a block to be associated with this leader. They are separate entities. So we don't have to worry about them being tied together in some special block form. And basically you can insert blocks into the leaders and you can see that we have this block right here. And this block basically was used with this leader. And so that's essentially how we can do this. Let me reset my view right here. And we're gonna go into the last option for these leaders right now. Let's make one more regular leader. And this time we're going to be using a very, very interesting option for this function. So we'll make another leader, a nice shoulder right here, enter, enter, and enter again for the options. And the last thing that we haven't talked about yet is tolerance. Tolerance is the most complicated out of all of these, and it's pretty neat how it works. So we're going to click on it now. When we click on tolerance, we essentially open up the geometric tolerance dialogue. And this dialogue seems extremely daunting and very confusing at first, but it's not that difficult. It's actually very easy. Now, don't mind me. I don't understand what all of these symbols mean here, but I do know what some of them are, and I know how to manipulate this dialogue. For example, if you would like this symbol to be turned on, all you have to do is click on this little black box here, and you can choose between different symbols that are here. So, for example, I could use the first one, and then for the second one, I could choose any other symbol here. And if you know what these symbols mean, of course, because they're geometric tolerances, then you definitely know how to use this more than I do. <laughs> now, for the tolerance area, you can basically just use, I believe that is a diameter symbol. So we can do that for both of them or one or the other. We don't really have to do both. So we can do that. And then, of course, we can type in any number that we want. So I can type in the number five or anything like that, etc. And you can essentially choose two tolerances, a datum, uh, or excuse me, three datums. And you can also specify your height and the datum identifier. And what's nice is that if you are doing this for the first time and you're also not fully aware of how all of this works, you can mouse over the box right here and we get a nice description that explains that basically for the datum identifier in this example, 
and we're going to create a datum identifying symbol consisting of a reference letter. And we can continue reading on about that, but we don't have to really worry too much. So that just told me that it would be a letter, so I could use the letter B, for example. For the height, it's saying that we are going to create a projective tolerance zone value in front of the control frame, et cetera, et cetera. So all of this can be turned on we can see that at the end, we can then choose what is called a material condition. So we have the three options for material condition. And so our tolerances can essentially be set. And the symbol for each set of tolerances for both the first and second tolerance at the top and then the one at the bottom can be completely different. So we can basically see how we can customize all of this to suit our needs. And that's basically how this works. Some of you will know more about me than this, but this is essentially how you can associate geometric tolerances to the leaders that we're creating. Now, what I'll do is I'm just gonna input this with some data right here. So let's say that our tolerance goes from three to five, for example, for these. Uh, this one could be four to six. And these are just arbitrary numbers, so don't mind me. <laughs> um, we'll do two, three, and four, and this will be five, six, and seven. Our height could be a number such as, uh, let's say it's five once again. The projected tolerance zone here, you can basically turn that on or off. You can see here that it says it inserts a projected tolerance zone symbol after the projected tolerance zone value. Very important to know if you know what that means. <laughs> so we could insert the symbol or not, either way is fine. Let's make sure that I have some symbols here. Let's use maybe the S one here, and then this one could be another L. Um, this right here, yep, these are all material conditions. So we're just gonna do one of each just to see what happens. And now let's reverse their order. So we'll do them like this. And this is just for demonstration purposes. So now you guys all know how you can manipulate this. I'm gonna be leaving this tolerance empty here to see if that makes a difference. And now that we have most of this filled in, let's click okay and let's see what happens. Look at that. It literally created this huge set of tolerances right here. And all of that data that we put in is now there. So quite interesting how it works. It looks like some data that didn't have a symbol next to it didn't even go through, I believe. So we'll have to look back at the video to confirm that. But now we can see how this works. And so we now associated this with the leader. Luckily, they are separate entities, so I could move this away. But look at that. With tolerances, the leader is actually connected to the object. While with the other objects we were using, the leader is also connected in some instances, but not in all instances with text, for example. So in these instances, it looks like the leader is connected to the text, but typically you can actually have leaders and text that are separate from each other just like this. So you can see that this was actually created as a separate leader. The text was then just moved next to it, and it looks just like a leader that has the text connected to it. So the lead tool does allow the leaders and the text or whatever data is to the right of it to essentially still be connected to it. So let me just press undo a couple of times. I'll go back to our view right here. And this is how we can use the regular lead tool. And as you can see here, the regular lead tool does have some benefits, but at the same time, we're gonna learn how the M leader function works very soon. This concludes our tutorial on the leader tool. Please stay tuned for our next one on the M leader tool. Once again, my name is Ari and I'm with Digital Drafting Systems. Hope you have a great rest of your day.